throw up the Green Style Alpine Ear Warmer. I have all of my pieces already cut here. I have black and white modeled fabric. This is an, a stretch athletic fabric that I have. And then the black is a stretch athletic fabric as well. And I already cut the binding pieces, which can be found on page four of the tutorial. They are for the adult, which is what I'm making today. They are 21 and three quarters inches long by one and a half inches wide. And then the other one is 19 and three quarter inches long, also by one and a half inches wide. So the first thing we're gonna start with is make sure you have all your pieces cut. And then we're going to take one of the side pieces and sew it together with the front. And you'll find if you match the length, it's very easy to tell which side of the side piece goes with the front or the back. This is the front and this is the back, the straight piece. Um, and if you get confused or this gets turned over and you start to wonder how this goes, the straight lines line up at the top and then the curved pieces at the bottom um, will be together. So it makes a big long curve. You can use any sort of stretch stitch you want. I'm going to be using my sewing machine just for a little bit less of bulk today. And so I'm going to be doing this to both the main and the lining. So we're going to start by doing these two pieces here and then I'll do that on the lining as well. Okay, so now we have our front, main, and sides connected and then our front lining and sides connected. And I went with a lightning stitch just because it's um, really thin and it doesn't take up a ton of space and it's one of my favorites for sewing with a sewing machine and sewing mix. So now we're going to connect the back piece. So we'll just take the back piece and right sides together, so here and here. And it'll make one continuous loop and you want to do that for the main and the lining. So we now have two circles of fabric all sewn together. So we're going to take the lining and with the lining side inside and the main side outside, we're going to put those pieces or those circles together. So you want to line up the front pieces and then line up the back pieces. And for me, because I stitched this on the sewing machine, I'm going to press my seam open. But if you did this on a serger, you can nest your seams by turning one seam to one side and then the other seam to the other side. And then you can pin, or I'm just going to baste these together once I get them all together. That way they don't shift. And the next thing we have to do is put the binding on and your binding needs to be in two big loops. So sew the ends of those together in a loop right sides together. And we're using three eighths inch seam allowance on all of these. All right, so now I have my two pieces. I just searched them together just to make it easier to where they won't shift at all. That was my method of basting. And now I'm gonna quarter them. So for me, I quarter it by flattening things and I take the two ends I'm gonna start with the top. That's the straight piece. And I pin both of them. Actually, you can really use notches, but for visibility sake, I'm gonna use them today. And then I match those pins up in the middle. And that'll give us quarter points. Then you take your binding piece that is shorter. We've got two pieces here. The top is the shorter piece, so this one's the top. And we're gonna do the same thing. You just quarter it. And then we're gonna match those quarter points up. Now when you place your binding on, you can do it either way. You can um, do it on the inside or the outside. It depends on what's easier. For me, I like the binding to go on the inside with the right side facing up and the right side facing up. So we're going to match those quarter points. You can also do this with the binding right sides together. I just think that this is a little bit easier at the very end when we put our binding totally together. And if you want, you can go ahead and do your bottom binding at the same time, or you can do them separately but we'll do the same thing for the bottom. You'll quarter the bottom and quarter the binding. And you'll see you'll have to stretch to the binding to fit just a little bit. And we're gonna sew that together with 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. I'm gonna go ahead and do the bottom binding too, and then I'll show you how to finish it with binding. All right, so now I have my ear warmer with the binding on, with both sides of the binding. So if you flip it around, this is what it looks like from the back. 
both of those on there. And I used a zigzag stitch this time, just so you could kind of see right there on that zigzag line what we're gonna do. So we place it face up, and we're gonna pull our binding up, fold over the binding to meet the fabric, or if you want, you can put it all the way just a little over the fabric and then fold down and that should cover that stitching line. So we're going to do that around the entire circumference of both the top and the bottom. All right, so this is what it looks like when I've clipped all my binding. And the reason I like to do it from the inside first is because it looks really clean. So we cover that stitching it's on the inside of the binding. And when you sew this down, you have a few options. You can use a cover stitch if you have one of those, or you can use a zigzag stitch, or again, you can use the lightning stitch. Um, you can also possibly use a long straight stitch depending on how much this needs to stretch. And you'll do it as close to the edge of the binding as possible. If you do it closer to this edge or even in the middle, you'll find that your binding tends to roll out and it just doesn't look as nice. But the closer you get to that edge, the cleaner this will look when you go sew that up. All right, and it's all done. Let's go inside and the outside.